I always found today's gospel to be disturbing. And it's a clear example of, at times, we need to dig deeper into the customs and traditions of the people that the scriptures were originally addressed to. Because you have to admit, it sounds sort of weird, doesn't it? You tie a guy up and throw him out to be mistreated because he wasn't dressed right. You pull him off a street and then you yell at him for not being in a suit and tie. Seems odd. But if you look at first century Jewish wedding customs, The host was not obligated only to provide you with food and drink and entertainment. He also had to give you a place to stay, and even clothing appropriate to the festival. It's one of the things that made weddings most likely the very most expensive thing someone in that culture would ever perform because it's a week-long celebration where you care for every possible need of the people you invite, of the people you welcome, including providing them with appropriate clothing if they don't have it. This is an interesting topic, I think, and I can't help but think of the modern day. When a monk puts on his habit, there's prayers. They actually echo the prayers that a priest uses. The prayer a monk uses when he puts on his tunic, the black robe. And the prayer a priest does when he puts on his white robe, his alb, from the Latin albus, meaning white, is the same. Clothe me, O Lord, with the new man, made in your image and likeness. We are all called to the wedding feast of the Lamb, daily, weekly, here at the altar. In fact, as Catholics, we are obligated to approach, to eat and drink the body and blood of our Lord at least once a year. But we can't be like the guest cast out from the wedding. We can't come to accept the food and drink and revelry and reject the new man, the garment, the clothing that our Lord gives us. In the gospel, the man came and enjoyed the food and drink, but he refused the full hospitality, the full gift, of his host. We cannot be that man. In baptism, we are all baptized and clothed in the white garment of Christ, made and conformed to be Christ in the world, his living person, the new man or woman, made in his image and likeness. It is indeed what welcomes us into the feast. We begin our faith journey, our life as members of the body of Christ, by being clothed in the new man, the new garment of God. Indeed, it welcomes us into the door to the great wedding feast of the Lamb. But like our man in the gospel, we cannot pick and choose what aspects of the hospitality of our Creator we accept. We cannot come to communion and reject the obligation to live a life without stain and without blemish. We can't soil the wedding garment we've been given and not clean it and launder it through confession and penance. Indeed, though we are all invited and summoned and called to the wedding feast of the Lamb, we are called to celebrate it eternally in heaven with our Lord, God willing. We cannot do so by, at the same time, rejecting what invites us in, 
we cannot reject the full hospitality of the Lord. We must come wearing our wedding garments, clean and white. Otherwise, like the man in the gospel, we may find ourselves with our hands and feet bound and cast out for all eternity, where there will be welling and grinding of teeth.